Hello the internet, Matthew here, coming to you from the beautiful and spacious Mackamaw Nature Preserve here in Fort Salonga. It's a gorgeous and scenic day and I'm happy to bring you another fantastic vlog. I want to thank you for tuning in of course and to carry right along from the last piece. Today we're going to talk about how our biology will ruin our lives. In 1933, a Swiss astronomer named Fritz Zwicky was studying a cluster of galaxies when he inferred that most of the matter in the universe was unseen, so he understandably called it dark matter. This would mean that all the celestial bodies and cosmological phenomena could be thought of as simply the froth on the waves of a vast ocean of matter that we do not understand. Of course, many of his scientific contemporaries ridiculed him for his idea, but it wouldn't be the only one of his hypotheses that would later be proved correct. Now this would be such a common occurrence that it was later said of him, when researchers speak of gravitational lenses, dark matter, and neutron stars, they all begin the same way. Zwicky noticed this problem back in the 1930s. Back then, nobody listened. Now it's not that Fritz was smarter than his colleagues, it's just that he had a mind that wasn't shackled by the chains of supposition. He observed the data, made his calculations, and then he allowed reality to speak for itself. After that, he simply presented his findings. What makes Fritz Zwicky so unique is that he was actually able to remain objective, even when he was faced with opposition from those who hypocritically claim to be the most objective people on Earth. Now this isn't to deify Zwicky or demonize his rivals, but to highlight the fact that humans are, by our very nature, not objective creatures. Once we get an idea into our heads, we cling to it, we make it law, and we enshrine it with the reverence owed to a deity. In terms of evolution, this makes sense. Such intransigence would ensure that fewer humans would take bold, dangerous risks, thus ensuring that more humans would survive to perpetuate the species. However, this survivalist adaptation comes at a significant cost, that being our sense of personal fulfillment, which is the reward that we can attain only after taking great risks. In short, our biology will ruin our lives to ensure our survival. Tai Lopez is the man well renowned for reading the equivalent of a book a day. However, there are some books that he refers to on more than one occasion. One of which is the best selling Salt, Sugar, Fat, How the Food Giants Hooked Us by Pulitzer Prize winning author Michael Moss. To summarize the basic premise of the book, when our distant and sometimes more recent ancestors were feeling stress, it was in response to a direct physical threat such as a natural disaster or a looming war. At that point, our bodies would respond to that feeling of stress by making us crave salt, sugar, and fat so that we could store up more calories because we didn't know what was going to happen next. Nowadays, we're under the constant assault of eustress, that is, stress that's more abstract, such as the pressure to hold down a job so that we can maintain a certain lifestyle. And yet, our body responds to this abstract stress the same way as it would a physical threat. This is exactly what fuels the obesity epidemic that plagues the Western world, most specifically here in the United States. The reason Ty speaks on this book so often is because it draws on our need to remain objective, to question our desires and override the biological impulses that no longer serve us. Learning what drives our urges can break the hold that they have on us, and we can use this knowledge as leverage to beat our biology. The only way to be truly, vibrantly successful in life is to take big risks, but that frightens your brain, so it will do whatever it can to keep you from taking such risks. It will use the reticular activating system and the amygdala to call up affirmations that the world is a frightening, scary, and unpredictable place, or that all successful people are evil, or whatever old programs it needs to put into your conscious mind to keep you from accepting the call to adventure and risking your life. What's more, if you continue to associate with people who believe these old programs to be valid, you will continue to operate them. However, if you understand 
that this is exactly what your brain and the brains of those around you will do to keep you safe from perceived threats, well, you could start to operate a new program to feel the fear and do it anyway. As I've stated before, in order to occupy a new reality, you've got to work to get there. And that work begins with your education, your real education. And that education needs to sink down deep, beyond your mind, beyond your brain, and even your heart. It needs to sink down all the way deep into your bones, into the very core of who you are. So that, as Dr. Robbins and Marissa Peer have mentioned many times, you need to make what was unfamiliar your new normal. And yes, I've discovered a trick how to do that as well, which I will of course reveal in the next vlog. Your assignment for this week is to comment down below with three goals that you have for your life. A short-term goal that you will complete within a year, a mid-term goal that will take you five, and a long-term goal that will take you ten or more years to accomplish. I'll be back next week with another vlog and another assignment. Please make sure you subscribe to this channel if you haven't already done so. And make sure you follow along on Instagram and Twitter as well. As always, all the links to all the relevant material will be down in the description below. And if you've gotten something out of this video, please make sure you share it with others. For now, this is Matthew of Monster Health and Fitness signing off. I'm reminding you that there is no portal to utopia. We're going to have to take the long way around.